the purpose of history. The Bible does contain history, but history means something very different in our time than it did in the ancient world. The ancients were not obsessed with facts as we are. They certainly believed in truth, but truth was not always found in a collection of factual details. For instance, modern scholars agree that the worldwide census that Caesar Augustus audited in Luke 3 could not have taken place when Quirinus was governor. The only recorded census took place in 6 AD, that is, after the birth of Christ. So the birth of Jesus could not have happened then. Also, Matthew's version of the birth of Jesus placed his birth during the reign of Herod the Great, who died in 4 BC, that is, before Christ. Both accounts cannot be literally historically true. Modern people can find these inconsistencies troubling, but an ancient author would have shrugged his shoulders. Both Luke and Matthew had theological and literary reasons for placing the birth of Jesus at those times. History in the ancient world was written for moral instruction and teaching. Histories highlighted the virtues, accomplishments, and courage of generals, statesmen, and philosophers, and the message was always clear. This is someone to admire and emulate. Bad individuals were often mirror images of the heroes. People were urged to reject these examples. Histories were often written by new regimes to justify their rule and authority. We find this in 1 and 2 Samuel. In other instances, previous kings were presented in the worst possible light. We see this in some of the Old Testament historical books, such as 1 and 2 Chronicles, which condemn the reigns of many of Israel's kings. An obsession with proving the factual or historical nature of Scripture and the insistence on reading it only in a literal way is fairly recent. This approach came out of the 19th century historicism and obsession with objective facts. The Church Fathers, although they began by reading literally, saw this as only an outer shell. They insisted that Scripture was a bottomless well that could be continually plumbed for moral and spiritual insights. The presence of something ridiculous or unworthy of God or one of God's messengers was seen as a red flag telling the reader that the true meaning must be found below the upper layers. The Church Fathers based their interpretation of Scripture on the elasticity and the boundless depths of the text. For instance, most readers would find Numbers chapter 33 verses 1 through 49 rather boring. It lists the different places where the Israelites camped on their journey out of Egypt to the Promised Land. But a church father named Origen, who lived between 185 to 254 AD, that is, after the birth of Christ, built a rich spiritual and theological treatise on these passages. It became a description of the spiritual life and journey of the soul. The church fathers were comfortable using symbols in the Old Testament that foreshadowed Christ and the church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul speaks of the journey of the Israelites through the sea as a type of baptism and the rock that followed them through the desert to provide them with water as the presence of Christ. Most important, the church fathers were not afraid to use the imagination to create a spiritual consciousness. For more stories, please visit our website www.pamphletstoinspire.com